Hey, I'm Ashley, and this is Ren the House Hen. And this is Tina the House Hen, because I have two chickens now. In September 2021, I adopted two more chickens to be Ren's sisters, Tina and Peach. It took a lot of effort getting them acclimated to living in my home and getting along with Ren. We were creating a whole new flock dynamic of three new chickens, and Tina and Peach already knew each other. So they weren't very nice to Ren at first. And then sadly, Peach died in January. So I haven't really been interested in making videos while I'm coping with the fragility of their lives. I will probably make a video about Peach at some point, but I'm just not ready to do that yet. Today's video is on a completely different topic. I received so many questions and comments and emails about people who are interested in having indoor pet chickens but I don't always have the capacity to respond to each individual. So I wanted to make a video giving you information about the best things that you can do when you're having a chicken live in your house. So here are my top six tips to having an indoor chicken. Number one, have multiple solutions for waste management. And yes, I'm talking about poop. The three things that I use are one, chicken diapers, two, disposable puppy pads, and three waterproof blankets. The primary way that I take care of their poop is by using chicken diapers. It's something that you need to change at least once a day and you'll need to change it more often depending on how much they stink, how heavy the diaper is, if they're looking uncomfortable. Then you also have to wash the diapers. I will typically hand wash them in the sink right when we're done using it. And then when I do laundry, I'll throw them all in to get a deeper clean. I have a whole playlist dedicated to chicken diapers, so I'll include that link in the description down below. When you're using chicken diapers, you need to be mindful that the diaper isn't causing any irritation or sores on their body, so you should check under their wings and wherever the straps could possibly dig along their body to make sure that it's not causing them any pain and injury. You also need to make sure that their cloaca is staying dry so I do check them to make sure that there's not excess poop buildup in their feathers on their butt. And I'll check around that area to make sure that everything looks dry and that there's no infection. The general process of changing a chicken diaper is technically easy, but it can feel stressful sometimes. Chickens are prey animals. So anytime you're gonna approach them, like going toward them, hovering over them, reaching out to them, that's gonna feel intimidating to them, even if you're somebody that they trust. Chickens don't want to feel like they're being hunted or attacked in any way. And even if you have a good relationship with them, in that moment, they can't decide like, hmm, do I trust this lady? Like they have to act as if they're being attacked. My Tina doesn't really like to be picked up at all. She loves being held, loves being pet, loves being snuggled, but the act of being picked up is distressing for her. And in turn, it's really stressful for me because I don't want to see her like that and I don't want to inflict that on her. So when I do it, I try to do it quickly and sneakily. The best way is waiting until they're on the roost at night. Sometimes that's my computer monitor. Sometimes that's my pillow on my bed. When they're already calm, when they're at a higher vantage point so they don't feel as threatened, um, so that it's less stressful for you and for your birds. So like I said, it can be stressful for me and maybe I don't always have the energy to deal with that. So sometimes I will resort to other options. So on days where I don't have as much energy, I have a large waterproof blanket laying across my living room to protect my carpet. And then I can spot clean that throughout the day. So I can just pick up the poop nuggets or I'll use a water and vinegar mixture to clean up the more sticky, slimy sequel poops. Sometimes I'll even let the poops dry out overnight and then just vacuum it up with my dust buster. And then when I do laundry, I could just take that blanket and throw it in the wash. The third way that I manage waste is with disposable puppy pads. So I'll put them in the places that the birds hang out most frequently. And that's going to be under my desk at my feet because they work with me um, or on the back of the couch when they sleep at night um, or under this coffee table. 
um, and then I'll just take that and throw that out. I like to leave them diaper free some nights so that they can more easily preen their butt feathers. So that's one of the occasions that I'll use the disposable puppy pads. And again, it's important to monitor their butts to make sure that it's dry and healthy and there's no infection. So you're gonna come up with your own preferred method of managing waste. There are some people who don't use any of this and maybe they have hardwood floors, so they can just spot clean as they go because it's not gonna absorb into their carpet. But I still recommend having multiple ways to manage the waste just in case like you're in a different mood. One thing to know is that there's always going to be accidents, so have cleaning solution available. I'll typically use a water and vinegar mixture that I'll use most frequently. And then when I have deeper stains, like say on my light gray couch, that's when I'll use something like Resolve. But one thing that you should know is that birds have extremely sensitive lungs and harsh cleaning chemicals are dangerous. So when I use that, I make sure that the birds are far away and then I'll always cover it with something just in case like I'm not looking and they try to go peck at it. On to tip number two. So chickens are super curious and they love to explore and they love to peck at the things around them. So you should keep your home free of items that they might peck at. And I know that sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised at the things that a chicken will peck at that you didn't expect. <laughs> so no styrofoam, be careful with pills and medication, things like earrings or screws or staples, like anything small that could fit in their mouth, the wire that's around the bread bag or like the plastic piece of clothing tabs, any possible tiny item that they could peck at, they will peck at, which can lead to perforated intestines. It could become a blockage in their intestines. It could be a choking hazard. And for the metal items, it could lead to hardware disease, which is basically them just being poisoned by metals. And obviously we know pecking at stuff is stimulating for them, so you can come up with alternatives to entertain your chickens. Just a couple of things I do, one of them is I'll throw scratch onto a towel or a blanket, and then I'll like shuffle and mess it up so that there's like folds and crevices that they can peck into to get the scratch. That's really fun for them. Whenever I get mail, I'll throw it on the floor because they love the different textures of paper. So like cardboard or newspaper or even just standard envelopes or like bubble mailers. They love to scratch on those and peck at those as long as they're not ingesting any of it. That's like totally fine for me. I have several different textures of blankets around the house. So I'll have like fluffy plush blankets or I'll have like uh, a soft muslin blanket or even knit blankets. They like to peck and scratch at new textures. Chickens love shiny things, so I let them peck at my fingers. <laughs> they have this like sincere fascination with shiny fingernails and my shiny rings. So it's one way that we bond and one way that they stay entertained. I like to mash up fruit like pulverize it and put it into ice pop mold so that they can get a refreshing treat. And because it's frozen, they really have to peck at it and like kind of wait till it melts. So it keeps them entertained for a little bit. There are so many options. You could use those treat toys where you put the treat in it and then the bird has to like peck at it to get the treats to fall out. The only thing that hasn't worked for me is like traditional pet toys. So no balls, no ropes, no chicken xylophones. Like the birds just haven't seemed to be interested in any of that. I've had a scare where I thought Ren ate a plastic piece. Let me go get it. So I thought Ren ate a little plastic piece that you'd put on the end of an ear camera, like to look inside your ears for wax and to clean it. This. We went to the vet and everything, and the vet wasn't concerned. Um, they couldn't do an x-ray because something like this wouldn't show. Um, but they did feel her crop and she didn't feel anything. And then I ended up finding the piece under the couch like 24 hours later. But if I was more careful while using the device, um, it could have saved me 24 hours of crying and telling my bird how much I loved her because I thought she was gonna die. Number three is a real game changer for me because I hate dragging out the big vacuum that has like a cord attached to the wall and it restricts how far you can go with the vacuum. Have a cordless hand vacuum. Pick something that you can just throw on a charging dock so you don't have to worry about charging it when you need it or using batteries or again, like plugging it into the wall and it restricting how far you can go with it. I can link the dustbuster that I use in the description down below. Chickens create a ton of dander, dust, chicken glitter, whatever you wanna call it. It's the casing of feathers and by removing it, it allows the new feathers to grow. 
They're constantly preening and doing this, so it creates dust all over the house. Almost every day, I take out the dust buster, and it takes just five minutes to get all the areas that they hang out in. So I'm doing like on my desk, under the desk, under the coffee table, sometimes a little bit on the couch, and then always in my bed because they preen a little bit before they go to sleep or before I wake up. And this just eliminates all of that dust and even feathers that they're losing. So chickens go through molting periods where they're, they're losing a lot of feathers and this just helps keep my house free of danders and feathers. Number four is to keep your air clean. Chickens have really sensitive lungs. So fragrances from perfumes, candles, oil diffusers, aerosol spray cans, that's really dangerous for them. Something that is especially dangerous for them are cooking related fumes. So if Teflon becomes overheated or you're using a self-cleaning oven or you burn food and there's smoke in the air, like this stuff can all be lethal for chickens. Birds have a sensitive, complex system of lungs and air sacs, so it's essential for them to have clean, fresh, pure air. And this isn't intended to be an exhaustive list, so please make yourself aware of the things that could be a threat to your chickens. I keep a scent-free home. And I also run two air purifiers. I have one in like my living room, dining room, kitchen area, and then one in my bedroom. The air purifier defrays some of the dust particles that are floating around. And one of my birds, Tina, has really bad allergies. And I've noticed that the combination of using the air purifier and vacuuming up dust particles has made a difference in her breathing. Something I learned about in the last few months is the risk that chicken dander can impose on human health. And it's something called bird fancier's lung disease. Basically, those small dust particles that chickens create either through preening or even like the dust from their poop can build up in the lungs and cause severe inflammation, leading to symptoms like coughing and wheezing, chest pain, fatigue, like really painful stuff. I want to enjoy a life with them that's safe for myself and safe for them. So I'm just mindful to keep the air as dust free as possible in my home. Number five, my tip is to regard your chickens in the same way that you would a cat or a dog. I've seen resistance from people in taking their chicken to their vet. Sometimes people don't think chickens deserve the same medical care. So my tip is if you do it for your cat or your dog, do it for your birds too. And finally, number six, and this is a good one because chickens are messy, messy eaters. Put a tray under the food bowl. I use a boot tray, like $10 from Walmart, and it has a lip around the edges so that when the chickens are pecking at the food and it goes flying, it generally stays contained by the tray. For some reason, anytime I put fresh food in the bowl, Ren goes up to it and she's like, these pellets on top are disgusting. And she throws them around to reveal what she thinks is like the most delicious food underneath. She needs to make a mess for her food to taste good. Instead of having to sweep the whole floor and track pellets that have like made it into my living room or like flown to the other end of the kitchen, it does generally stay contained in the tray. And you can take the pellets off that tray and put it back in the food bowl, or you could just take the tray and dump it over the garbage can. Also, when it comes to food bowls, pick something that cannot tip over. I use food bowls that come with a frame. So you like take the bowl and you put it in the frame um, because chickens love to perch on stuff. And even though it's only like an inch off the ground, I always find Ren and Tina like jumping in their food, around their food. Um, and if we were using a standard bowl, like surely it would spill everywhere. Those are my top six tips for having indoor chickens. Did you learn anything new here? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know if there are additional tips that you have that I might not be aware of. I love to optimize our little indoor chicken life. If you wanna see more videos from Run the House Hen, be sure to like and comment to let us know that you're interested. The best thing that you can do to support this channel is stick around and watch another video. It lets YouTube know that you like our videos. Say bye, baby Ren. Oh, Tina's jealous. Come on, Tina, come here. I was gonna have them say bye, but it's not working.